interesting day. And the last couple days have been incredibly tough for me. I have not fought against the truth. I have not fought against reality. Yet here I am, ready to show you how to play the London system. Have I not begun? Surely. It is live. Oh my goodness. Talk about trolling, right? Yes, I have begun. I'm very happy. Okay, just checking. <laughs> live, yeah. So my intro once again um, for a really long time, I have spoken about the London system in a very bad light. What's up, Torlek? Eccentric horse. You have indeed jinxed the stream, but that was only, I think, the first two minutes of it, after which I just prayed to the gods and they gave me um, a beautiful quality stream so that I could be here with you and fight you against uh, all your opinions today. So no problem, I'm here. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to obviously stall and uh, talk to you about everything other than the London system for as long as I can before beginning. But I do want you to know out of all the research that I've done on the streams that I have given on Chess24 and CoChess on Twitch, on Twitch, I did so I, this, probably the information I have on the London is more than I've had on any other topic. And I'm going to be teaching you, <laughs> I'm going to be teaching you some tricks, some traps, and I will also show you a couple variations. I'll show you the ideas, I'll talk to you about my experiences in the London system, <laughs> anti-chess, um, but I will also tell you that despite everything I've said, it's not a bad opening. It's not a bad opening. Why haven't you congratulated me on winning the Norway chess tournament yet? Um, because you're an eccentric horse. Horses can't play chess. But uh, congratulations to, to Magnus Carlsen for winning the, the Norway chess event. Big congratulations. <laughs> hey, perpetual stalemate. Um, so this one is actually dedicated towards my my very close friend here, perpetual stalemate. He's a avid London uh, player, chess enthusiast, improver person, and uh, bot, I should say bot, I've been dreaming of <laughs> this is going to be the best stream. <laughs> Smart guys, what's up, Alwyn? Dave, uh, Irv, oh my goodness, you love the London? London is out of certain April Fool's, okay. So as I was reading up on it, and I mean, I was looking at I think the site is called iChess. There was also some articles on Chess24. There were articles on... I don't know where else I was looking. Chessable as well. Chessable has a bunch of great text that you can read about openings. And what I really like is the clickbaity titles of Quick to Learn, um, This Opening in a Nutshell, Easy Concepts, these kind of things. Because you want to click on it, you want to know it. If you could learn anything um, in in like 10 minutes that otherwise would have taken you about a year to learn, obviously you're going to click on it. You're going to want to know what's what's up with that. And today I should have changed the title to something clickbaity, anti-chess in a second. <laughs> I'm joking. London system is definitely playable. But I think the reason a lot of people have chosen to play the London system is because the theory is so easy to learn. I mean... It's all in the word system. When you're playing a system, whether it be the Bodvinik system, London system, um, some uh, exchange French system, you're going to be learning a setup. And that setup is going to obviously cut down on a lot of um, sidelines and variations that you need to know because your structure, your um, your setup, the way you're going to put your pieces are pretty much going to stay the same regardless of what your opponent plays. And the London system... I thought 
to refute the London system, you got to play the King's Indian defense. But what I had discovered is that right in the beginning, when the King's Indian defense was played, the structure of blacks was so impenetrable that the London was then made popular to counter it, which was mind boggling because I thought it was the other way around. It was crazy. Good to see everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Versus QID. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Stay for the stream. Screws. Why not? Ah, oh, okay. Check you later. Anti counterplay in one second. <laughs> What's up, Mariah? Past porn. Good to see you. Okay. So, like I said, very little theory. It's fresh and fun. Quoting, definitely. Black cannot play on autopilot. They obviously have to be careful. And perfect for beginners, experts, juniors, and people with bad memories. Now I understand why some people play this opening. <laughs> okay. So... Um, my research obviously opened my eyes to so many things, but uh, we will all go through that together. And there's one variation that I have included as well, um, which is called the Jobava, the Jobava London system, named after Badur Jobava, who made it popular to play something like d4, d5, bishop f4, knight f6, and knight c3, or even knight c3 second move. And the whole point of it, I mean, it's not only to threaten the c7 pawn with an early knight b5, which he has played many, many times. I think it continued with something like, um, uh, of course, if you're not playing c6 or a6, there's c5, knight b5, uh, knight a6. So it just kind of throws uh, black off their course for a bit, um, but it does transpose and we'll go over a game by Joe Bava um, in his line where he made it popular again. Because after some time, the London system seemed a bit stale because obviously there was constant improvements and a system is not easy to tweak. But then there came along a, a time, and I think I'm gonna read a quote to you as well. It says, uh, I saved it. Okay, now the London system is well and truly back, right? But it wasn't always that way. The turning point came just over a decade ago when it was realized that a tweak in the move order granted extra options for white. Very simply, d4, bishop f4, led to a resurgence in popularity. In former times, we called this the Mason attack or the Mason attack. After an American player, James Mason. That wasn't the quote. Okay, now it's very much part of the London system family, as is the Jobava system, uh, particularly free spirit in the Grandmaster world, which he is, because didn't he want a Lamborghini at some point racing on Twitch? <laughs> That's amazing. Um, did I really? Oh, there we go. The King's Indian defense would go on to greater things. Obviously, the opening had improved and so on. The London system changed from smelling success to the smell of mothballs for decades and i know that the earliest recorded um kind of games of the london system were tracking back to the 1700s which i was looking up on chessgames.com and i saw that and i was i was very surprised i thought the london was something that was kind of put together recently but it must have just resurged recently and it says, because the theory of the openings expanded and white found a new and more adventurous ways to combat new openings. So it wasn't that the King's Indian came along and refuted the London system, but the London system wasn't the best response to the King's Indian defense and white had found new resources to counter it because it is so strong, right? The London system has a family. <laughs> sure. I mean, it's a good thing they didn't call it uh, Badu, right? Badu system, but Jobava has a middle name, guys. Jobava, Jobava, Badu Alexandrovich Jobava. 
Can you believe it? And a really cool fact as well is while I was looking through some London games, I also spotted a very familiar name. So shout out to all the South Africans out there. I'm also from South Africa and we found a game with Nigel Short playing white and he was playing the London system against our very own Watu Kabesi. And that game was played, I will tell you the year it was played. And it wasn't too long ago because I was only looking at some like pretty recent-ish games. Uh, 2011, so nine years ago. And as we were saying, anything that is considered recent would be in the last 10 years. Definitely. From Brazil. That's really great to, to hear. I'm happy to have all of you here. Is the Kali part of... I wanted to talk about the Kali Torleg. So before we jump into it, I'm going to show you... We'll start with this position. Um, I'll first tell you where I got this position. And then I will go on to talking about the Kali uh, Zuckertort and the Kali like normal Kali versus the London. Because um, I think the stone wall, the birds, the Kali, um, the London system, they all kind of sitting under the same tree because they're all about controlling the center, but not only the center, but this very important square E5. And that's why when I was talking about the King's Indian defense, a lot of the time you'll find black playing D6, which just kind of shuts down the system altogether. But I guess white still has some very decent chances, although it doesn't have the center um, central control that he otherwise wanted to have. All right, so this position in particular uh, comes from a video I watched on uh, chess calm and the video was done by uh, Armand Hamilton and he did like a quick kind of video on traps in the London system and when I watched it I quite liked this very uh, position and I'll show you the continuation as well and the last move that was made here was uh, let's use some color there we go the last move that was played was queen e7 and usually, I mean, personally, I prefer to play something like b6 or queen c7 because you're basically fighting for the control of the square, e5. And if black gets in this e5 move, then it'll be very good for black. So a bad move for white here would be castling. So this is where I got this position from. And now to uh, talk about the Kali system. You find that the classical uh, Kali system looks exactly like this, only the bishop is left on c1, I believe, and the whole point is you want to play e4 really quickly. Then you have the Kali Zuckertort, which I can actually show you quickly. Give it a second. There we go. So the Zuckertort looks something like this. Um, I played it. A couple times actually you play knight f3 and the Kali system um, is also okay a system I don't know e6 uh, d uh, e3 c5 and you can even play uh, early b3 here and the reason for that is if you play bishop d3 there's c4 which can be annoying although not incredibly good I suppose then uh, you play an early b3 because you want to get the bishop to b2 as well. So maybe let's play knight f6. And now we can play bishop d3, knight c6. And this looks like a very normal setup for black. I mean, if white had played an early c4, we'd get um, a very common tarash with the iqp and so on. Then we have bishop b2, bishop d6. And to be honest, anyone who's never seen the Kali Zuckertort before would still feel incredibly comfortable here with the black pieces. But knowing and having played it from both sides, um, I would feel very nervous in this position. I've played, I think the last time I played the Kali system, um, it just kind of threw my opponent off completely. But then I realized how kind of, um, uh, not boring, but kind of dead it was in terms of you, you didn't really have to... Um, uh, think about the opening or find any tactics immediately a lot of it was just kind of close your eyes and, and play what you know kind of thing and all right so we have okay white king castle castle um i think one of the re main reasons as well that uh, people don't play the Kali system anymore is because of an early bishop g4 i don't know any other systems that are, are good against the Kali system i don't sound enthusiastic talking about this come on 
I'm really trying to stall, huh? Do I play on Chess24? Uh, sometimes. Yeah, both sides. I've played the Kali system for whites at some stage in my life. I think a couple years ago when I was still at school. Um, 2013, 14 I played it. I'm talking about at tournaments at least. Sorry, I think I'm talking so much that I don't get a chance to read the chat, but I'm streaming on Twitch and YouTube, so you'll find the YouTube um, video will be on Chess24 YouTube and CoChess.com Twitch. Yeah, okay, I'm just going to catch up and chat just to read your comments if you have any other uh, questions. The royal family. Is London the best opening? I believe there are a lot of openings that are good. Um, but today I will be promoting the London system against my very will. <laughs> Put Planty on. Planty's there. So this is my plant. He's a grandmaster. Have you ever seen a plant that is a grandmaster? Eccentric. That statement is a crime against chess. Oh. It is a crime against humanity, not just chess. It was that nameless guy liked the system so much that he changed his, his name to Jovan. <laughs> oh, wow. Carlson played it as well, which made it even more popular. Yeah, we have a, a game with Carlson versus Anish Giri that we will take a look at. Named after GM Marilyn Manson. I thought it was Marilyn Monroe. The London system is, of course, named after the very famous city of system. <laughs> um, where's system? Which country is system in? Is it in the country of London? Just it would be like Port Elizabeth, South Africa. It'll be the London system. No, system London. The system of London. Hi, Zombie Chainsaw. GM? Are you talking about Grandpa Master? That makes sense, right? Hey, Glam Drink. <laughs> Crush Draw Master. The Draw Master and Shiri. Yes! Yes! Well, I mean, we're going to show all games where the London system took the reins, but we're all going to call it luck. At the end of the day, right? I didn't understand it right. You don't like the London system and show it to us? No. So that's not the case. It's not that I don't like the London system. It's that I'm going to show you why the London system is a good system for those just beginning to play chess and those of you who do not like to learn a lot of theory. And like I said, I made some notes as well. I will give you a... Sh uh <laughs> I mean, even uh, Grandmaster Simon Williams was talking about the London system at some stage and just kind of saying you gotta gotta push uh, Freddy the F pawn at some point, I guess. <laughs> There's very little theory, fresh and fun. Black cannot play on auto. Black cannot play on autopilot. That's true, and uh, yeah, it's just tough all round. Difficult to break the London system. Right back to the Collie system here. So then at some stage we play the move 95 now that I've caught up in chat. Still need to know London theory. I guess, but it's just a little bit less than other openings. <laughs> okay, so we have 95 and then we have... Um, okay, obviously this is a blunder to take with the knight because now you're forking the bishop and the knight. So going back a bit, um, we also have queen c7. But if at any point black attempts to throw um, all the pressure onto this knight, we can simply play f4 at any point. And this knight is going to go via d2, f3, supporting the knight on e5. And e5 is just completely solidified by white's knight. And if at any stage they want to capture with the bishop, go ahead, right? Go ahead. They can't put the knight here because of the queen, the knight to d7 and now it's just completely winning for white. I believe we can play something like queen h5 um, targeting <clears throat> the h7 pawn, g6 can be played 
but this doesn't even matter. I think we... Can we take? I want to take it. If it would be very nice to have the knight on d2. But I'm so tempted to just... It doesn't work. Okay, we can play queen h6. And there are zero. If you cut the board in half, the only piece defending the king right now is the rook on f8. So that pawn, you will take with the f pawn because you want to open up the f file for the rook and then bring in the knight. Um, to d2, you can even kind of... Uh, pop your rook here if you're feeling fancy because they they will never be able to take this I mean the the engine is going wild at the moment if I showed you what it looks like um, It says two two point eight seven f five is the best move for black. That is rough That is rough. I can't see the engine, but I'm kind of guessing at this point. What is the best continuation? I think we take it. Do we take it? I guess we could take uh, knight takes I don't like that it's open for the queen here, but possibly still just much better for white. Take everything whether it works or not. Okay, so now that we've looked at the collie system, we've seen the similarities uh, between the collie system and the London system. If you've never seen the London system before, then this is the place to be. But we'll go back to this position over here. Um, and I want to know from you guys, from what we've seen as well, the London system and all the other systems we have mentioned is about the control of one specific square. See, the main problem with a move like castling at this stage, it would be a terrible move for black, uh, for white, because black will just not only find equality over the board, but also find it very, um, a very comfortable position because they would gain access to e5 they would just gain back control of the e5 square and after white takes like this take 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 um taking here take we can even do this and this and it doesn't it doesn't matter because rook d8 and e5 is not a problem anymore it's zero problem and it's completely equal for black black is equalized so we're going to go back to the beginning and instead of castling, I need to know from you, what is the best move for white? What is the best move for white? Garta Kumski is a great player. He rarely is. I'm a huge fan of, of Garta Kumski. Occupy e5. Exactly. That's the whole point. That's what we want to do here. Ninety-five. <laughs> flip the table. <laughs> I guess you could flip the table. Um, but honestly, I, I really like this position for white because the queen is on e7. I don't really see the point of the queen on e7, probably just to develop the queen. But I would really much rather put pressure on the e5 uh, square with queen c7 because after the knight goes to e5, it's, it's very difficult for black to find a way to gain back control of the square. So now we're going to do... Um, we're going to play a move here, and the move that we're going to play looks very, very natural for black. But this move is actually a mistake. Um, yeah, a bit of a mistake. And now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what's the move? What is the move here? Knight f3 is interesting, but remember now knight f3 would be met with f6. F6, then we're kind of forced to take a knight anyway, but there's a tactic. So this is one of the opening traps I'd mentioned earlier. The reason I wanted to start with this is because maybe I could sell the opening to you uh, before we actually go through any games to make it seem like it's boring or something, but um, this is where all the action is at. So if you can uh, get this position in any game and, and ex actually execute this perfectly, like, you would be my hero. <laughs> um, queen h5 is interesting. Bishop h7 is very interesting. Although, uh, don't be too hasty. We have knight takes d7. I like that one. Very nice. Very nice. Good evening, giant pixels. Action, action, action. <laughs> it does look... It looks stonksy, but it's not the stonksy we're here for. Knight c6... Not knight c6. Knight takes c6 is not the answer. Nope. Close. Very close. So, 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 so close. 
knight d7, yes, knight takes d7 is the answer. So then we have bishop takes d7, and I'm going to let you continue this one. So bishop takes d7, what's next? Oh, so hasty. That is the ultimate plan. So the clickbaity title, I think, included knight takes h7, and I was like, ooh, I want to see that. <laughs> yeah. Guess you mean for black? What? For white? Alrighty. Not queen h5. Yes. We have bishop takes d6. Queen takes d6. We're getting there. We're getting there. Almost there. And I must... I think these moves after knight d7 are pretty much forced. So, so when... First of all, black plays rook e8, for instance, or queen e7, for instance. I believe this plan stays the same. Um, yeah. Well, rook e8. Uh, rook e8. Okay, regardless, rook e8, you play knight e5. Pawn takes e5. I like it. And now the Greek. <laughs> Greek gift is when the knight's on f3. Knight has to be on f3 for that one to work. So here we take the pawn on c5, queen takes on c5, and now the move you've all been waiting for, everyone spam the move of the century. We gotta do this, drum roll, let's go, come on everyone write it down, everyone, no not castling, not queen c2, <laughs> what is, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Long, not even long, oh, come on, you trolls. <laughs> King e2. Oh my goodness. I'm giving up on all of you. All of you. We, I, there's like one person who wrote this down in the, in the YouTube chat. Chris, Christoph Klein, you are the only one. <laughs> not Queen H5. No. The most aggressive move you can find on the board right now. I did the drum roll and everything. Why are you doing this? <laughs> yes, two people so far. Three people, let's go. Four people, five people, let's go. I need ten. Yes, six. Come on. Let's go. I will play it when ten people. Yes, seven. 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 <laughs> Flipping the table is aggressive. Eight. Ten whole people. <laughs> Why so ambitious? <laughs> Not bishop a6. It's white to move. Dare I kill, you just need to write down any move you see on the board right now. Or the right move. That's nine! No. Why would you say that's reluctant? Yes, bishop h7! 10, 11 people said it. Bishop takes h7 is the beautiful move. I did not understand this when I was looking at the video. And the thing is, even the engine was not able to understand what's going on here. I was looking and I was like, but you need more than one piece to attack the king. Now you have the bishop, the queen is coming in, but where's the knight? What's going to happen, right? So we have king takes. And now the other move. Again, I need 10 people spamming the move in the chat. What's happening? What's happening after king takes? No pieces left. <laughs> king b3. But the king can't go to b3. Ah, uh, yeah, queen b3. Okay. What's up, Jericho? h5. Yeah, queen h5. Okay, we have two people already. Three people. Well, I know this tactic. Kev uh, Calvin said it. Uh, Zilka said it. Um, Cappy said it. JR said it. Irv said it. Oh, wait, I still have one more finger left on this hand. <laughs> David said it, Deepak said it. Isolated pawn. Eccentric horse. Let's go. Let's, oh, yes, we got 10. We got 10. We got 11. We got 12. We got 13 people saying it. Let's go. Okay, queen h5 is the move. We go back with the king. I don't know why I'm hyping up the London system so much. I just really like this trap. And now the move that I was not able to find. But after this position, it kind of existed on the board. Um, there wasn't any space between the video to actually find it. And it was just kind of said and I'd realized it at the same time. At the same time. Not knight f3. There's something a little bit more aggressive. There's something you have to realize in this position, actually. Bishop h7 fixed that. 
94 looks good. Exactly, 94 is the move. And the whole cool thing about this is that not only does it threaten the queen after taking, but it also, if the queen moves, now we have knight g5, and it's as though the knight had already existed on f3 going to h5, and this is like the Greek gift kind of being summoned from the ashes of the underworld, and there's no way to kind of stop this because after the rook moves, we have queen h7, king f8, queen h8, checkmate, and we also have, okay, f6, this is still mate, there's no way out, I think. There's absolutely, you're gonna have to give up your queen for this, this is pretty terrible, but I mean, that's all. This is like the coolest trap I've ever seen in my life. And to be honest, it's almost, it's almost not making me entirely dislike the London system, which is crazy. I didn't know that such a little bit of research could go such a long way. And I kind of ended up thinking if I had to put more effort, not in any more effort, but more research time into the London system, would I start liking this opening? And then I questioned my whole life and I had to sit down and the dramatic music started playing in the background and I was like, what in the world do I do? <laughs> don't do it, it's a trap. <laughs> Does black have any move here? I don't think so. I don't think so, Jericho, unless... Now this is the unless that we're all kind of relying on right now. What if the queen goes to b6? Then we have knight g5, rook e8, queen h7, king f8. But apparently that's not the way to go. What's the move? What's the move here? It's a tarp. <laughs> I don't think we, we like talking about tarps out here. Queen f7. Yeah, queen f7 is the move, king h8. And now what? And now what? Queen f7, king h8. <laughs> Long castle x clam? No. <laughs> throw the h pawn just to be slow? We're not going to throw this guy. This guy is a little bit far from home. He wants to be a queen, but I don't think today's his day. So can we go back maybe? Queen h5, king g8, but then what happens after that? Gartakumsky's London system. Would you really say that Gartakumsky uh, created the London system? Was he still alive in the 1700s? Is he immortal? Is Gartakumsky a vampire? Can someone please go ask him, come back with the information, and we'll write it down in the re research papers? <laughs> Queen h5 again. The only prop, the only difference here is that we've removed this uh, f7 pawn. Oh, he's a vampire. Thanks, K-Bear. <clears throat> kind of looks like a vampire. No. Well, if you're telling me he looks immortal, then this I can agree with. Yes. I don't agree that that long castling is the way to go, Amadeus. I don't think rook d1 is okay as well. I cheated. I cheated. Ca long castling is the move. How in the world is long castling the move? I thought you were joking. It's the best move. No. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. What? <laughs> <laughs> Amadeus is a secret GM. <laughs> oh yeah, the London system. It's the opening that just keeps on giving, guys. It just keeps on giving. Okay, well, now that you've you've seen uh, the tactic, I want you to take a, a photo with your mind here, guys. Take a photo with your mind. If you get this position, play knight e5. If they play knight d7, just capture on d7, and you're good to go. I mean, the whole h7 idea is always there. That's why if you're playing white against the French, if you're playing white against the Karo Khan, against the, um, even in some cases, the Sicilian, or just 
um, if you're playing D4 and you're getting together this whole like Kali or London system kind of setup, you want to put the bishop on D3 because you never know against a, a, a club rated player, club level player, or maybe even a beginner, you will get the opportunity to play something called the Greek gift. And the Greek gift, I'm going to set it up. Um, let's just play this and I'm going to play really bad moves here for black. Um, we'll play a3 and queen e8. Okay, then we have something like this, right? So we have bishop takes h7, king takes h7, knight to g5, king back, and then we have queen h5, queen h5, and then we're kind of just ending off the game here. But I think black gets away with this because there's knight f6. So if there's no knight f6, if the th there's no bishop on e7, then you can play something like this. Also, if this bishop can reach f5 in any way, then it doesn't work. So it's only like really rare cases that it works, I guess. So coming back. Oh my gosh, queenside castle was the answer. Ah, you trolls win again. You win again. I also didn't expect Lancaster. It's a computer malfunction. I think, so my theory is that Amadeus, the old, the whole, like, Oh my goodness. Okay, so this burrito came along, hacked into Chess24, changed the, event, the, the engine evaluation. I combined words, don't judge me. Then set it to Longcastle, and when I scroll down, I see Longcastle, and he wins. The extent people go, <laughs> the extent people go to, to be right. I'm also giving up on Chess, Calvin. It's rough. The evil burrito. Judged. <laughs> the Mozart taco. Oh my goodness. Okay. So now we have the beautiful, uncontested Badur Alexandrovich Joe Bava opening versus Le Quint Lee. Um, what's his name? Liam. 2017. So it's, it's very recent. Um, we have once again. The line that was written over here that I want to read to you from the article that I read, it says, um, the London system is well and truly back. The turning point came just over a decade ago when it was realized that a tweak in the move order granted extra options for white. Very simply, d4 bishop f4 led to a resurgence in popularity. In former times, we called this the Mason attack after the American player, Jason, uh, James Mason, Jason Mason. <laughs> Is now very much part of the London system family, as is the Jobava system. Named after Badu Jobava, a particularly free spirit in the Grandmaster world. Now, it can't just be his Twitch channel, but I do want to know what else makes him a free spirit. What makes other people believe he's a free spirit? What has he done in this life to make people think that? I want that title. I want that reputation. <laughs> it's October. I mean, if 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 I was able to change my name every month of the year, then I would. But unfortunately, I cannot. You're a programmer. My goodness. You did hack chess 24. I knew it. So what you're telling me is the goal of the London system is long castling. I'm glad that's what you took from this. If you don't if you don't long castle, it's not the London system. <laughs> don't listen to me, please. He doesn't really play conventionally. So it's only chess related. I thought it would be life related. I thought it would be life related. I'm a free spirit. Thank you, Mucky. So let's begin. So Jabava obviously played here uh, white pieces versus Lequan. Lequan. The um, d4 knight f6 knight c3. When I teach d4, I preach constantly as black or as white, do not put the knight on c6. So do not put the knight on c3 unless you have moved the c pawn first. If you happen to move the c pawn one square, then the knight just goes to d2 or d7. That is the rule. That is the general rule. But then Jobava came along and just said, What's up? Don't 
do that. It doesn't work. Follow me. I will show you the way. The way of the master. So, if my student ever came up to me and said, Well, the reason I played this is because Jobava, I will indeed flip my table. Okay, but nonetheless, I wanted to go over this because of the whole description that the pawn on c7 is always at a risk or at some point um, <laughs> writes down another reason to answer. <laughs> no. I'm not preaching d4, come on. Hilarious, sir. Jobava. No, but I, you know, I actually got confused between Jobava and Grishik at some point. I thought they were the same person because you'd never see them in the same hall at the same time. Um, but it's just Grishuk is the thug life. Jobava is the Lamborghini lover, so <laughs> we've made a distinction between them. Uh, Long Castle is a secret. Good grief, it's all too much. I could agree. I couldn't agree more. Okay, so I have bishop f4 on the board and e6. And now knight b5. The uncontested knight b5 hitting c7. And he's probably playing someone of the same strength um, that he is, 26, 2700. And he's playing knight b5. I have so many questions. But okay. Knight a6 being the only move to defend. Because if you're playing bishop d6, you just lose the bishop pair. Bishop d6 is met with, or met by, knight takes bishop. And after pawn takes, not only have you, I guess, double pawns in the center are not that bad, but not only have you doubled the pawns, but also you've given white the opportunity to kind of retain the bishop pair, which is not an advantage you want to give white so early in the game. Okay, nonetheless, we have knight a6, e3, c6, knight comes back. What was the purpose of that knight on b5? Perhaps to just throw off black and... Like, force him to play knight a6. Who knows? It's Joe Barber. Knight c7. Knight f3. Bishop d6. Knight e5. And we see the control of the only square that rarely matters to white in the London system. So what I'm thinking is, if you're a London system player, and you play d4 first move, and your opponent responds with d5, do you have this, like, big sigh of relief? What is your reaction to this move? But also I know that in some cases, uh, the Grunfeld setup is not so bad against the London system. So what do London players like? That is my real question. What do they not like? And can you please put emphasis on what you don't like so that I can do that in my very own games too? Thank you. <laughs> and then we have um, the King's Indian defense. So if we have uh, d4, you don't know whether your opponent's going to play the London or the Queen's Gambit or whatever. So I like to keep things flexible by playing after d4, just knight f6. Because with knight f6, you can play the Grunfeld. You can play the Benko Gambit, if you rarely wish. You could play the King's Indian Defense. You don't have to commit your pawn to the center on d5, because maybe as soon as they play c4, there's no... There's no reason why they would go ahead with the London system. Perhaps their bishop would even end up on g5. And you can just uh, play e6, d5 after that. Aren't you supposed to have an answer rather than a question? It's good to post questions to the audience. Pretending to not know and then calling it a test. If you know what I mean, Glamdring. Mickey Mouse is about 27 reasons by itself. <laughs> Are we learning the Jobava opening? Uh, London system, Jobava variation, no. I just wanted to show it to you. Coffee with way too much sugar? What? Did I have? Well, I had a coffee. And it did have, like, a little bit of sugar in, but, like, anyway. <laughs> uh... Knight c3 is basically played and pretty strong if black goes into king's Indian defense setup, isn't it? But then I believe if you're going into a king's Indian setup, you're playing knight f6. Then we have knight c3. Uh, g6. And then white plays e4. So white plays e4, gets an e4 knight. And then it looks like a perk, almost, I, I think. 
right? Looks like a puck. And then after e5, we just try to play like knight e2, c3. Or I don't know what you want to play. Okay, so we have knight e5 on the board. Castle, queen f3. That is a statement of a move. It's pretty much saying, I'm going to go for your king. You're just castle. That's a very big commitment on your part. And once again, I don't think this game is a prime example as to what the London really is because white once again queenside castles but I do believe that in most cases of the London system white kingside castles so just keep that in mind so if c5 of course if uh, white is going to try and attack on the flank um, black is going to want to counter in the center that's a very important rule if at any point you find that your opponent wants to attack you on the side of the board just um, say no and then attack in the center. That's pretty much all you gotta do. And we're queenside castling. <laughs> I feel like the theme of today is queenside castling. Yeah. Is that a new box? No. Oh, this one is kind of open because I use this one. <laughs> Okay, so we have c4. c4, probably preparing b5, b4, right? New title, playing long castle in the London system. g4. Rule number one, when there are opposite side castlings. Ask castle, castling. Ings. <laughs> Always try to pawn storm as quickly as possible. It's usually about a fight... Uh, to see who is faster. So if you have castled on the queen side and your opponent has castled on the king side, you're going to try and push the pawns on the side where your enemy king is. You're not going to push the pawns where your king is. You're just going to keep your king safe and just pushing pawns is going to create some weaknesses. So don't do that. Now, obviously, uh, Joe Barber's idea here is to play g4, h4, g5 and at some point just rip open the G and H file, get the rooks involved and try to checkmate really quickly. Anti-London system. So no YOLO... What? Is that a YOLO sign? YOLO pawns? <laughs> oh my word. A, a different way to describe a race... What's what's with my wording? What's wrong with my wording? Okay, anyway, we have b5 on the board and g5, exactly what we said. I guess there was no reason for an immediate h4, and also the knight cannot go to h5. Usually you find that if your opponent is a little bit hasty with their pawn, moving, pawn movements, and you can pop your knight on the side of the board and support it with uh, g6 or otherwise uh, any side of the board, um, it's better to just kind of uh, make a bed for your knight because that's an outpost first of all and it's going to stop your opponent from being able to push their other pawn any further but over here this is not possible because of the queen so then probably just knight d7 in this case or knight e8 okay then we have h4 h4 f6 chasing away the knights but of course we're not going to allow that and finally we have opened up the g file jobava is in on it we have rook g1 and b4. This is actually a position I'm wanting to stop at. I forgot the, the next move, but I'm going to take a look, try and see what the next move is, and then have you guys tell me what you think in this position. What is the move that Jabava played? And it's very, actually very similar to what I just mentioned about the knight movement. The key move is queenside castling in the London. Please memorize. I don't think so, Kelvin. Don't say that, please. <laughs> Rookie eight. You must play ninety five. Yes, Marcy. Not knight b five because the knight will just take on b five. Is Magnus Carlsen tilting? He's suggesting some blundery looking moves. What's happening there, eccentric horse? <laughs> is English your first language? No. So my first language is actually French. Yeah. Pawns must always live twice. 
once as a pawn and again as a queen. That is very profound. I think I'm going to tweet that, JRQ. Thank you. I'm going to steal that and tweet that if you don't tweet it first. <laughs> a bonjour. <laughs> I was just test Oh, you're testing me. Okay, got it. Buku. I don't tweet. Why don't you use Twitter? Everyone uses Twitter. Bishop h6? No. Because you play bishop h6, pawn takes on c3, you take with the rook on g7, and king h8, there's nothing There's nothing for us. Maybe there's knight f7, but rook just takes on f7, maybe. Um, so here, like I mentioned with the knight moving, uh, we play knight a4. And the reason for that is at some stage, if there's going to be a c3 on the board, we're just going to play b3. Our knight's going to live a very long and fruitful life here on the side of the board. The pawn is not going to be able to move any further than the a5 square. So things are pretty good. I, I like knight a4 very much. Not everyone, clearly. Jared kills the bots. Confirmed. Valley girl French. <laughs> Bonjour. Okay, bishop d7, putting pressure on the knight, but we say no, playing knight c5. Of course, we had to move there, and now the bishop goes to e8. I'm going to stop once again. This is a very bad move, apparently, for black, and we're going to find a very good way forward here for white. So go ahead, guys. Do your thing. Do your thing. <laughs> Okay, I wouldn't call you a bot then. French is the only language words for victory and light squared bishop. <sighs> See a check, play a check. Who said that again? Was it Ben Feingold? I've been watching a lot of Ben Feingold's Endgame videos. I'm now caught play saying stuff like suspicious and terrible and do you want fries with that? And I don't know what's becoming of my life. <laughs> See a check, play a check. Uh, oh yes, knight b7. You're checking the queen if that's a thing. So we're checking the queen right now. So knight b7 attacking the bishop. We're threatening to win the bishop here. And this is great. Queen e7 and we're chopping that bishop. That bishop has no say in this life bishop d6 is gone and that was actually black's strong bishop because the pawns are kind of locked on the light squares at the moment on e6 d5 and c4 and our bishop was or the d the d6 bishop was on a dark square meaning that bishop was more powerful the bishop on e8 is going to struggle for some freedom although it does look like it has a lot of range at this point but uh in actuality in terms of uh, structural ideas and like concepts we know that White's light squared bishop is good, black's light squared bishop is bad. And we've taken the knight, I mean, we've taken the bishop and queen takes knight. Rook g7? I just played that move. I didn't, I didn't wait. I should have given you that, but I didn't even see it. Goodness me. So king takes. But what's the back, what's the plan? What is, what's going on? What is going on? Somebody tell me. Ah, I see, I see now. I can see clearly now. The rain is gone. Um, so do you guys want to tell me what's up? What's the next move? What's the next move for white? <laughs> and this is very important. I mean, there's like two moves that I was looking at and the, the one was better than the other. Not queen h3, but we do, we do want to uh, play what Amadeus had said. See a check, play a check. Pay the check. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I always want fries with everything, me too. Even with breakfast. Like you're having some cereal. You want some fries with that? Yes, please. I'll put the fries in my cereal. <gasps> fries flavored cereal. <laughs> Not bishop h6. Bishop, because you're going to need that bishop, right? What I said earlier. Not queen g3. Not queen g3. So, um... 
queen g3 could be met with something like bishop g6. Well, I was also looking at some stage playing something like knight h5, but not the best square. Fried potatoes. <laughs> exactly, queen g2 is the move. And after queen g2, we have bishop g6 anyway. Okay. And after that, simply, quite simply, knight takes g6, attacking the queen on d6 with our bishop, as you can see here. So it's kind of a discovered. We get uh, some material back for the rook, because when we uh, sacrifice the rook, we were giving uh, the rook for a pawn. So we got a pawn, but now we also got an extra piece. So that's four points for the five points that we had lost. And uh, we just need one more pawn, and we're equal. So the queen goes to a six trying to attack on a2 but of course we say no to that we say no thank you because we're polite and uh, now i'm going to just click on this bishop to remove the highlighted squares and now we need to finish off our opponent but it's so important to be able to finish them off if you can't knock them out what is the point of punching them in the first place yeah don't and i i'm going to quote someone who uh, really loves these like first person shooter games and and Fortnite and stuff like that he constantly preaches don't shoot at me unless you're going to kill me so don't punch someone unless you're going to knock them out you know what i mean <laughs> i'm glad we've chosen to be polite hey neil bruce how are you doing why are you using the what first jay or kill i just called you a bot what's wrong with that ari the what pawn Ari, the A pawn. <laughs> pawn. Oops, now we're punching. Never mind. I like it. I like it. I like it. Some of you are getting it. Some of you are getting it. Waiting for both chats to get it. Ninety-five. Right. So we're getting a lot of that in the YouTube chat. We have ninety-five check. Very good. Then we have King. 2h8, but that's that's not all. The next move is unbelievable. The next move is crazy. Absolutely crazy. And I think it's not so much about the move, but more about clearing the space for another move to, to come ahead and, and join the party, I think. <laughs> Go on YouTube to look smart. <laughs> No, Twitch chat is, is definitely smart as well. Don't compare yourself to a different chat giant pixels. It's never good to compare yourself. <laughs> oh my goodness. Why punch your opponent when you can just offer a draw? Wait, you're not actually Magnus Carlsen. You're Anish Giri. I knew it. Bot spam. Oh, exactly, Glandring got it. My goodness, Bishop C4. Good gosh. <laughs> I guess you're protecting A2 in a way, but after just Queen B7, I mean, he didn't even want to take the bishop. He was like, I'm just going to retreat my queen because I need to protect the G7 square and uh, also the knight, I guess, in some variations. But the last move, guys, the last move is what made black resign this position can you believe it and i even mentioned the square that we will be threatening exactly exactly thanks for spamming <laughs> the move my goodness i don't take preference to the chats uh perpetual stalemate i'm not going to choose like au revoir <laughs> maybe yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Not rook g1, not rook g1. So rook g1 is definitely in the mix. We want that to happen. Alwyn prefers glamdring, for sure. That is why he's so for draw, but don't worry, you draw a is me. <laughs> Good job, eccentric horse. Okay, so bishop h6 is the move, and it made this poor guy just resign the game. Bishop h6 is the move. 
And what I'm thinking here is that after the knight moves away, or even rook g8, for that matter, we have checkmate. Okay, we have knight e8, which also leads to something, right? What does this lead to? What do we get? Ah, we just have bishop takes. So there's no way out. It's over. It's over. Beautiful stuff. Okay, we have time for maybe skimming through one more game. And this is the game uh, when Nigel Short played against one of South Africa's finest players, Watu Kabesi. And uh, it's a bit of a pity that Watu was playing the, the black pieces here. But what I do want to note is that this is amazing. I look up um, a certain topic and a South African player kind of makes the makes the cut. So I really like that. I really like that. Up for a draw. No. <laughs> Benju. What? Alrighty. Let's go through this game real quick. So D4, Knight F6, Knight F3, G6. And here, uh, Watu Kabesi obviously played the King's Indian defense as we have discussed uh, prior as well. Here we have it. Future world champion Max Yu dabbled in hypermodernism in his younger years. He played the King's Indian defense at the London tournament, but not particularly successfully. Alakine and Rubenstein both used the London system very effectively against him. Capablanca did the same to Retty. Although two years later in New York, Retty would sensationally beat the reigning champion with his own Retty opening when hypermodernism rarely came of age. Well, that is interesting. So like I said, King's Indian defense would go on to greater things. So the King's Indian defense has improved a lot over time. And I think a lot of it has to do with move order and different ideas. So not too much about changing the opening as a whole, but more like tweaking things here and then new ideas, novelties that soon, soon enough uh, become uh, strong enough to write books about, right? So here we have bishop f4, bishop g7, e3, castle, bishop e2, b6. b6 is very nice. I like b6. a4. My word. a5 and h3. h3 is a very common idea in the London system. So if you want to go ahead and play the London system, the reason for an early prophylactic h3 is to make space for that London bishop. So this bishop is really important. If someone comes after your London bishop, you just say, no, thank you. And then you play h3 and your bishop can hide on h2. So if knight h5 does come, as it does in the king's Indian defense, you can just play something like h3, hide the bishop on h2, and use it later on. Because the whole point of bishop f4 is to control the e5 square. And then you're going to play something like bishop h2, knight e5, and in some variations, even f4. That's what you want to do. So h3 is very important, although it does look like a waste of a move of an opening. You're gonna play h3. <laughs> Alrighty. Bishop b7, castle, d6, and bishop h2. There we have it. So li like I said, it's Nigel Short versus Watu Kabersi. Uh, Nigel Short is playing white pieces here, and the knight has decided to retreat to the d7 square. And this happens so that black can eventually play the move e5. I'm assuming that either the rook will go to e8, or he will aim towards f playing f5. So if knight a3, very nice idea, e6, so probably f5 is coming soon. Then we have c3 on the board, the knight will probably be directed, redirected to c2, playing b4. What's happening now? Is this a short game? Um, in terms of length, no. In terms of player, yes. <laughs> oh my goodness, okay. Stalemate, it's not better than checkmate, I guess. A sheepish world champion? No. Hey, Jam. Are you telling us that the London bishop is better than the French bishop? It's a short game, but not a short game. I like that giant pixels. 
Okay, queen e7, b4, like I said, I honestly expected knight c2 first, because usually before attacking, you have to make sure that all your pieces are in their optimal positions, but when you're Nigel short, you can do whatever you want. Knight c6, knight b5. So the knight was not actually going to go to c2, but b5 to threaten the c7 square. So after queen e7, of course, after every single move that your opponent makes, you have to ask yourself at least one question. And if there were to be one question you do ask yourself, it will be this. What weaknesses has your opponent created by the move that they just made? Okay, so we have rook f to c8, queen to b3, and knight to f6. Rook b1. And as we can see, um, white has made the plan very clear. And even though the London system does sway towards controlling e5, attacking on the king side, that's going to change. As your opponent makes decisions over the board as well, here e5 is not exactly obtainable. And also the move e4 is not possible for white because of the knight controlling the e4 square. So now Nigel Short obviously knows better and uh, decides to kind of change his plan and, and put pressure on the queen side instead. Especially with the London bishop being so strong on that diagonal, it just makes sense to put pressure on that diagonal, right? So rook e1 inadvertently attacking the queen, even though there's a bunch of pieces in the way. We have knight d5 and bishop c4, now putting pressure on the knight. And I'm assuming here that e4 is definitely on the table now that the knight is no longer on f6. So let's see what happens. Taking on... Oh... Oh, what makes sense here is not uh, to not play c takes b4 because the pawn will just drop, so bishop takes first. And this seems a lot stronger. Let's see what happens. Queen d7 moves away. Rook c1, knight e7, knight c3. And c6. The bishop on h2. Not looking too shabby anymore. Is it still the London? It's still the London. We're still in in the, sis, the city of system. Didn't even mention the Italian bishop. Well, that bishop, that bishop is gone. Why am I playing this opening? I think that's that's for the the person playing the opening. That's that's their problem. If they want to be philosophical or um, self-critical, then that's on them. I'm just here to help them on their way to realizing their true potential in many ways, many more ways than one. I don't, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. So c6, rook d1, and bishop g7. We're seeing a lot of do not hurry moves here. So knight e1, rook a7, probably wanting to pile the rooks up on the a file, and at some point putting pressure on a4. Knight d3, rook a8, knight f4, and bishop back to h6. Like I said, a lot of do not hurry, and this concept of do not hurry was actually taught to me by Watu Kabersi. I've had pl like plentiful lessons by Watu where we would go on these like amazing um, like chess journeys of like studying games and learning end game concepts and these kind of things. And um, I believe like one of our longest sessions went on for, like four or five hours just at a time where we just kind of get lost in, in chess study. And that's incredible because I didn't think I had an attention span <laughs> that would last that long. <laughs> but honestly, when you're learning and not only learning, but um, enjoying the, the learning process, I think anything anything's possible. So we have b5 and taking on b5. I don't know whether kind of piling your pieces on the side your opponent is trying to attack is a good idea, but I do like the aesthetics of b6, b5 and d6, d5 uh, kind of offering a gorge <laughs> on the c file. Um, but we'll see what happens to that c file later on. Queen takes and bishop to c6, putting pressure on that a pawn. And bishop back to g7. That bishop's gone on a journey. I think it's taken walks back and forth through the park of life. We have bishop h6, bishop g7, bishop h6. And then we have rook c1, rook a6, and knight takes d5. Okay, knight takes d5, knight takes, and bishop takes, queen takes. That gorge is diminishing. Bishop moves again, c8. 
Rook takes b6. I'm wondering whether rook takes a4 is better here. Nope. Bishop f8 is the best move. Rook takes b6 and queen takes a4. A lot of exchanges happens. And this is crazy. I mean, this position looks close to equal. Very, very close to equal. It's probably in a time scramble that things went a bit south. Oh, I see what happened. I see. Is it still time? I don't understand. Maybe you can take, take and push the pawn. Ah, but it's still better for white, I suppose. G4. G4 is the best move. Okay, I would, I would continue playing in this position, but I suppose when you're playing against um, a top-rated player, you want to have some kind of respect, or maybe you just have a deep understanding of the position. And right now in this position, if I was playing um, Blitz or something, I would continue playing for sure. Just a pawn, right? Not just a chess coach, but a life coach. Important. <laughs> it was many years ago, but it was fun. What are you talking about? I visited London once. I visited System once as well. So London is good opening to play for a draw with white. That sounds like a genuine question. I am genuinely going to answer that. So yes, I think so. I think so. If you're looking for a draw, the London is perfect for you. Yeah. No, I think the, the London system... Please don't quote me on this. The London system is a very interesting opening. It's definitely playable. It's played by the top players in the world. And I definitely also think it's it's popular now because of all the new ideas in the London system, including the Jabava, <laughs> Jabava uh, London system and, and so on. But like I said, if you're looking for something quick and easy to learn, very little theory and just a quick understanding of how to control the center, the London system would be for you. But if you want to play attacking chess with a lot of tactical um, ideas and motives and also uh, opportunities, then I would say steer clear of the London system and d4 altogether. Just Statistically speaking, I would say that e4 has a lot more tactical chances than d4. But nonetheless, it, it just depends on the opening, I suppose. And uh, once again, it's always such a pleasure being here with you guys, talking to you, laughing with you, and learning some chess. This was a very interesting, not only like time of, of research and an opening that I'd never consider learning, but also being able to speak to you guys about this opening and just about everything. So I appreciate that and a big uh, good luck to the World Online School chess tournament participants. I think the tournament's happening in a month or two months. So I wish them a big good luck and have a great evening and a great day further, guys. So see you around. <laughs> Bye.